All right, music nuts, welcome back to the Real Music Observer. This is Dave observing real music in real time for real people just like you. And the war between Herbie Herbert and Steve Perry from the 1980s. That's the topic of today's video. Uh, I don't know if it was a war. You could call it a power struggle. I mean, this is well documented again for all of you folks who are on message boards 24-7. This stuff has been debated, it's been talked about. Uh, a lot of folks that tune into this channel, though, are kind of new to all of this drama, and they haven't spent their last 20 or 30 years, uh, you know, debating people in inside of internet chat rooms about it. So here's my take on it. Uh, Herbie formed this band. He more or less tried to be a father figure to these guys. I don't think Perry took to the whole father figure thing. I think Perry was his own man. He had his own family. Whereas some of these guys, you know, like the guitar player, for instance, 15 years old, he's out, you know, playing with a, a major rock band and then is now in this band. And Herbie acted like a mentor, an advisor, a businessman. Herbie did a lot of the business stuff. But once Steve became more self-confident, he wanted to take over and do that sort of thing. And what's ironic though is Herbie, in his wisdom, even though he clashed with Perry, understood that Perry was the meal ticket. You could say Kane came in and really exploded everything, uh, and that's partly true, but Perry was still the meal ticket. He was still the golden voice. He was somebody who was so unique and so different and so dominant in what he did that they were willing to say, okay, Steve, it's, it's, they even said in the documentary, hey, we were all pro Steve. Steve, what do you want to do? Raised on radio was more or less a shot across the bow to everybody that said, hey, uh, I'm taking over this. Uh, I'm going to add elements of r and I'm going to do a lot more soul singing like I want to do. I don't want to be this rock and roll screamer my whole life and the material on that album was tough to sing but it was not as hard to sing as the stuff on Frontiers and of course Escape uh, both of those albums being kind of like the dynamite that exploded the band in in the sense of, of just popularity but Raised on Radio was saying look I want to make music for adults I want to make music that's going to last. I want my Sam Cooke, my R&B influence, my Smokey Robinson. I want all of that stuff to be in there. And Herbie, of course, historically has said he didn't like that era of Journey. In the meantime, of course, he's beating Perry into the ground. Uh, the band is touring relentlessly. Perry says, I'm going to do a John Lennon. And not in the sense that he's going to get shot by somebody. But Perry said, look, you know, like, I'm thinking of the song, just watching the wheels go round and round. Perry's like, I got to get off this thing. It's just crazy. And he did. Uh, he had his mother passed. His girlfriend left him. He was absolutely spent. And, you know, the other guys couldn't do much at that point. And they knew... That's why they were groping around. Okay, let's do bad English. Okay, let's let's do let's you know, like Ross Valerie. Let's go off with the storm. Let's you know everybody was trying to find this niche without him, and they had some minor successes in there, but Perry left it, and he left it because I think he believed that at that point he didn't have much left in the tank, and he didn't want to keep this merry-go-round going. Now. What does that have to do with today? Well, today it's kind of the same thing. Burning out singers. Uh, I, I see a little bit of what Perry uh, did or what was he, what he was going through. I see that a little bit in Arnell. Uh, you see it in the fact that Steve Jerry, the poor guy, his voice is fried. He's out there. He's earning some bucks. He is a great showman. Uh, the fans love Steve Jerry, but vocally he's he's toast and Herbie who is now being vocal about the current situation in the band as I talked about yesterday I think he fails to realize one thing 
that in his quest for creating the giant ATM machine for himself and other members of this band who really rely on the income, they just, that's, this is an income. This is, you know, we've got to keep up with the lifestyle, which we, we can't, you know, maintain. Uh, Herbie, I think, fails to realize that he created this monster. And every time somebody comes along, like Arnell, this is our meal ticket. This is our next wave. This all kind of stems from the monster that this guy created. I mean, this isn't Deep Purple, okay? And Deep Purple, I'm not trying to... The reason I bring them in all of a sudden is they're just this self-sustaining, we do what we want, we create an album, we tour, we go over to Europe, we play some big dates, we make some money, we shop our wares where the people appreciate it. To keep Journey relevant in the United States, it's public relations, it's great marketing, it's Live Nation, it's, you know, let's, we got to hit the, hit the road this summer. We got to be on a bill with somebody else. And, you know, if Perry ever comes back to sing and do live dates, Perry won't have to sing with anybody else. He just puts his name on the marquee and everybody's going to show up to see him because it was Perry's band and it, it kind of still is. All right. That's my video. I'm Dave, and of course, this is the Real Music Observer, the battle between Perry and Herbie Herbert. The effects, or the after effects, are still going on today. We'll talk to you later.